This is the login screen that shows up once you open up VideoScribe. And I've chosen to have VideoScribe remember me, so it's just one step easier to log in. It has both the English and Spanish language available. I'm English speaking, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to click on this log in button here. This will bring me to the project screen where all of my saved scribes are. You can create folders to save your scribes. So this is something that I would do if I were working on a client project and I expected to have revisions. So typically my workflow goes like this. I will create a scribe. I will save it in a folder and export it, upload it to Vimeo or YouTube privately so that the client can watch the first cut of their whiteboard animation. And when they give me feedback, if they want any changes, I would then continue working on the scribe from that folder. So I'd go into the folder, I would click on the most recent scribe that I've currently worked on, which is lesson one version two. And when I double click on it, it opens up a prompt asking me what I'd like to save this newest version, the version I'm going to now be working on as. So I can either continue to save it as lesson one version two. You can see here that it is within the video scribe course folder. What I like to do for organization purposes is every time I go back into the project to work on a newer revision of it, I will save it as another version. So we last saw I was at lesson one version two. Let's assume I'm going to now continue on this project with more changes. I'm going to save it as lesson one version three. That way, if for any reason, let's say the client sees the third version of the scribe that I send them and they say, oh, you know what? I really liked what you had done in the second version you sent me. Actually, can we go back to that? I already have that scribe ready to go. I don't have to therefore fuss around and try and figure out how I can go back to what the previous version looked like because I've got it saved. So that's how I like to stay organized. You can also save your scribes outside of folders. You can save them online as well, or you can save them to a hard drive or your laptop or computer. Let's go into the default settings, check these out. So I've changed these from the original default settings and you can as well. I have my auto save, so this will save my project every two minutes. My default transition time, which we'll learn more about, I have set to 0.5 seconds. I really like that default transition time and having this set as a default makes my workflow faster and easier, which you will see later on. My default pause time, which we also explore more, is 0.5 seconds. I've set my max draw time to four seconds. The default image quality for the images is set to 800 pixels. You can bring up your image quality all the way to 4000 pixels. In doing this though, this is going to cause the performance of VideoScribe when you're working in it to slow down. The recommended pixels to stick at for your images is 800 to 1000 pixels. So I'm going to stick at 800 pixels, which is the default setting, just because this does create high quality looking images and it doesn't degrade the speed of working in VideoScribe. If, however, I'm going to be zooming into an image, I will set that image at a higher pixel rate. One thing to note is when you go in and change the default setting and the default pixel size of an image, that change will only be applied to the images that you've brought in to your project once that change was made. So if you're working on a project where you used the default image quality of 800 pixels throughout your whole project and then you go in and change the default pixel size to let's say 4000 which is the max you can, the images that you've already used in the project 
will remain at the quality that they were set to when you use them. Animated GIFs and text isn't affected when you change the default quality setting, but your images will be. So just keep that in mind. Now, as you work through VideoScribe and you create more and more different projects, you can go down here and you can have them show up as the oldest first or the name order or the newest project first. And here is a filter option. So let's say I'm looking for my furnace videos by clicking that only my scribe files that have been saved with the word furnace will show up. Let's just go back into here and clear that filter. This folder down here imports scribed files. I would use this folder if another editor saved a scribe project onto a hard drive and passed it along to me to use. In that case, the scribe project wouldn't be saved on my project panel here. I'll just show you here. So I'd click on this. I'd go into the hard drive here. I have a folder here from the other editor that says video script projects. I double click that and there is the mermaid scribe. So highlight that and open it and it would open right up. Let's just go back to the project panel screen that shows up once you've logged into video scribe. You'll see that this project does not have the mermaid project, which is the project saved from another editor on the hard drive. It does not have it showing up. That's because it's been created by another editor. When I save it, I am going to have it saved as the mermaid and I'm going to click this check mark here. And now you can see that this mermaid project has also been saved on to my project panel here. So I can work off of it there. If I planned on sending this project with the latest updates back to another editor, I would save this project on to my hard drive. This allows us to create a new scribe. So we'll click on there. And now we are looking at the video scribe canvas here. Think of this as an infinite canvas. It goes forever and ever. This took me a while to get used to because coming from a video editing background and using Premiere Pro, which is an editing software, the layout is different. The timeline is a little bit different, but once you get used to VideoScribe's workflow and canvas, it all starts to make sense. Next, we're going to look at how to bring images onto our canvas how to time them out, different transitions, different ways of having them drawn on the canvas, and more.